Welcome to the Christian Youth Camp Podcast. At Camp Chioka, it has been our mission for over 50 years to lead campers into a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ and each other. These conversations share the heart of our camp family in efforts to lead us all into a deeper relationship with the Lord. Today, I had the privilege of talking with Ty Tubble, a Louisiana native who began here as a shy camper and is now running our activities team, so he is an advocate of getting out of your comfort zone. I call Ty the silent life of the party because he cares so much more about fostering connections between his campers instead of bringing the attention to himself as a leader. Since he was shy, it was a feat to get him on the podcast today, so I pray that you hear his heart for others because he doesn't have to say the Lord's name a lot to make it known, but just his general disposition towards life and towards those around him is the face of Jesus to so many. It's about how we live out our lives and not how we talk about them. So I pray that you hear just a glimpse of how Ty lives out his life in this conversation. Ty reminds me that it's not about how we talk about our lives, but how we actually live them out. I have been blessed by his friendship and his ability to just sit and enjoy, but also his ability to plan and intentionally create memories together and bringing people together. He makes new faces feel celebrated, and I pray that this encourages you to celebrate life with someone today. Today we have Ty. Ty, how do you say your last name? Um, it's Tuffle, like shovel, but with a T. <laughs> Perfect. And Ty, what are you holding in your hands? I'm holding this turtle that I found outside. Um, he was just laying on the ground. When I walked over here, so I picked him up. And what did you name him? Um, Steven. Perfect. So all of our season two episodes are on YouTube, so feel free to watch to see what happens to the turtle <laughs> throughout the episode. But Ty is our activities director here at camp this year, so can you kind of explain what that role entails? So basically, being on activities is just... Like, the best way to describe it is being a cheerleader. So um, you're just kind of keeping the spirits very high, um, kind of like motivating the kids, and you're kind of setting that bar that the kids are going to follow, basically. Um, when you're on activities, you, like my job is to, like, lead the games and make sure the game, like, everyone has what they need for the games and the ele- electives and tournaments and just, like, fun stuff that the kids can do um, um. and make memories with. So what has the things you've learned from your position, how has that applied to your life outside of camp? So this is my third year at camp. So coming into camp, I didn't really know like what my gifts were. And then last year was the first time that I actually did activities and I found that I was pretty good at it. So I was pretty good at, you know, keeping, you know, making everyone happy and like kind of keeping everyone like in a good state yeah, and then, like even like leading activities um it's so, like leading like nitty gritty or get to know you games I'm pretty found that I'm pretty good at like crowd leading and keeping one everyone involved and engaged and stuff like that so going on to like past camp and like throughout the whole year um it's just helped me like through my everyday walk with like keeping everyone positive and kind of staying positive and you know things at work um when you're in activities, you have to kind of be a little organized. Yeah. So you have to make sure that everything is, like everyone has what they need and you have everything that you need with the games and everything that, you know, you've kind of thought through everything so you don't get to there and you're like, oh, I forgot this. Yeah, because it has to be well organized to have yeah. fun or else yeah. it's yeah. a mess and confusing. Otherwise it'll just be crazy. <laughs> So that's really helped me, like, work, you know, staying organized, um, making sure that I've thought through everything and yeah. that I'm prepared. Um, I'm going to put the turtle on the ground. Okay. Um, the turtle's going on the ground, everyone. <laughs> so, like, that's kind of helped me with, like, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and, like, even activities, like, the best thing about activities is, yeah, I don't have a cabin. And, yeah, I don't have um, kids that I'm responsible with, so I don't really have to chance or it's not as accessible for me to get on a deeper level, but it is. Mm-hmm. But I'm just more exposed to the whole camp. So yeah. I don't really have to focus on a set group of kids. Like my focus is like the whole group of kids. So yeah. like I'm more exposed to kids that, like for me, like I would be, like I'm able to 
um, get to know like some of the girls, and then I'm get to get to know like some of the younger kids if I'm in like an older cabin. Yeah. And it's like more of a. I don't really get much on a deeper level, but like for an activities person, like you, and you know, like for me, I'm like fueling those activities. So I'm fueling those memories that the kids are making with each other, the memories that they're making with their counselors, like yeah. those things that will stand out year from year. And like that's what like, yeah, my goal is. So I may not see it myself and I may not be like on the forefront of like a counselor's job would be, but I'm still creating it's like more of like creating connections between the campers yes absolutely because like we all remember even our staff training like yeah. nitty-gritty and who was on our team so specifically and for a lot of campers that don't care about the spiritual side yeah they're going to connect with their activities director because Good. they want to have fun um so you're talking about like being organized and planning why is that important for a christian and like just in your walk with god to have some sort of plan well because if you don't really have much of a plan then like or like any organization at all, it's really easy to get lost yeah. and kind of overwhelmed and kind of forget about things and stuff like that. So I feel like it's super important. Like you don't have to be like super planned and like super organized, but like kind of like have like a routine and yeah. and kind of like something that familiarizes yourself with things and it's a lot easier to, to keep track of and yeah. to keep the same routine. Because as we go through the routines, like high school one and high school two yeah. and middle school, we get better at the activities yes. as the routine builds. So in our walk with God... We get better as you learn from things and stuff. Like yeah, that, so. and then as far as just having fun, because we could just do like spiritual activities every night. But why do you think it's important to have fun and to have games and like for fun to be intentional? Well, the spiritual part of camp is like probably one of the most important things. Yeah, but like a lot of kids that come into camp, they're not very like their relationship with God is not that great for like a lot of them mm -hmm. and so like they don't want to like for them to come to camp and only do like prayer walks and um prayer nights and stuff like that then it will basically like guide them away from camp and not want them to come back because they're not really they didn't really come for that so the activities is important because like you're putting in that fun and then after that fun you can kind of like grow the relationship with your campers and really like get on that same level as them and then you can bring them up with like the spiritual stuff and they're yeah. more open to do that stuff so activities is more of a gateway into the spiritual stuff yeah and I think that's the same mindset that we have towards like non-believers is literally just being their friend and like meeting them where they are so how have you seen that carry out in the rest of your life like the having fun and building a relationship first and I feel like for me like I'm not going to go up to someone and and instantly it's like someone I don't really know I'm not gonna instantly start telling them about God I mean I yeah. will but like not like heavily and like bring them to church and like that obviously I'm gonna get to know them I'm gonna you know hang out with them for a little bit like really get them to trust me yeah. and like be my friend and stuff like that because then it's like easier to guide them with you because they'll like see who you are and they'll they'll like want what you what you have yeah. yeah and people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care yeah. Yeah. um so literally just being a friend which i see you do so well with <laughs> everyone around you um and you also said activities is being a cheerleader and i know that you were a cheerleader yeah, in college so what does that mean to you like the idea of a cheerleader and encourager so it's really different because like like for me as a cheerleader i was not the very like energetic person yeah. but like whenever I'm doing activities and stuff like that like that that's a good mindset to get into because you want to you want to basically cheer on the people you want to like set a level and you want to encourage the kids because like some mornings they're going to come in and they're going to be tired and and some kids are going to go to the activities and they're not going to want to do it or they're going to feel like too like they won't like and they, they'll feel like embarrassed or like yeah. they'll like won't have any friends and they don't really want to be part of it or they'll just like feel like they're too cool so like showing them that like it's okay to have fun and like really showing them like what like how would you have fun like in a christian way mm -hmm. and like because once you set a level like the campers are going to mimic what you do and so like if you're like very low like energy 
and they're gonna not be super happy. Yeah. They're gonna mimic you. So like, it's important for the activities team and like for me to be super high energy all the time because then that they'll feed off of that. So yeah. that's kind of like what a cheerleader does is they like encourage the team. So like you want to encourage your campers to have fun. Yeah, and that's part of why it's so important in camp and in the real world to fill ourselves because mm-hmm. if we're exhausted, how are we supposed yeah. to be? The energy for other people, and we even see it as early as elementary school, kids being too cool or too embarrassed to participate in activities and to have fun. And then if that keeps going by the time they get to high school, nobody will do anything. Um, so just the importance like to be goofy and silly, yeah. which you literally let us in yeah. bingo last night yeah. and dressed up <laughs> and let us in line dancing. Yeah. So it's like... Like, the kids heavily see us as role models that, like, like we may not realize it, but they look up to us. So, like, yeah. showing them that it's okay to be silly and be crazy and and just kind of have fun and that they need to know that, that camp is a safe place that you can be who you are and, like, no worries. And showing them that is a really, like, it, it'll stick with them. Yeah. I'm going to always picture that. And we as adults have to remember that because even we're all quarantined at camp right now. So even just the small group of us here, it's easy to just be like, oh, we'll just hang out, whatever. But Ty's been intentional in making us all do fun things together, and those are the things I'm going to remember. I'm not going to remember sitting in the staff room on my phone. I mean, it's like, like I said, like we could just sit around and just talk and hang out and stuff like that, but like bringing in like a fun game of bingo or doing some kind of like pool party or something like that, that like... Yes, we're still hanging out, but it's kind of bringing us all together, and we're all making memories together, and we're just doing something different than just hanging out. It's like sharing experiences together, which is so much of a friendship. So then you're talking about how you get to interact with all campers, and not just focus on your cabin, but really like look out and see people. So how has that changed the way you interact with people outside of these walls and trying to see everybody instead of just your own group? So it's like it's really easy at camp to. I go up to a camper and that you probably wouldn't like you like you know like you can see a camper and you're like oh I know I won't relate to that camper like you know they're not the same interest but it's yeah. like like all you have to do is just just talk to them like ask questions and that's really helped me in like my life like I'll be in the grocery store and I'll see someone that I wouldn't talk to and I would you know say you know I just spark up a little conversation yeah. nothing crazy but like that sticks with people so that's really helped me in like seeing people as you know all the same all in God's image and and all being loved by God and all being made by God has really helped me to just just love people and it it doesn't have to be something crazy it could just be like a smile or something like that but I feel like here has helped me get out of my comfort zone of talking to all different kinds of people and stuff Mm -hmm. like that so I feel like carrying on into the real world is a really yeah it's like an extra step I mean it's a little harder but if you just think of it as just like, that's just a little camper. Then that's not that you would know. <laughs> yeah, we're all campers. Because yeah. I know it's so humbling for me to always remember the people that I am like scared of or avoid are the same people Jesus would be eating with. And like those are the people we're called to be friends with. Um, my roommate plays this game. I don't know if I'll explain it right. But literally whenever she sees someone in public that she just kind of wants to spark up a conversation with, she just asks a question about like whatever the thing you're holding is. Yeah. So she's like, is that an iPhone? And they'll be like, yeah, like, it is, and then they just start talking, They're like, is that a banana, and they just talk about whatever it is, and it leads to a conversation, just by, like, one second of being silly, or, like, yeah. bold, or whatever. It's just so easy just to go into the grocery store, or go into the mall, and just, just have your headphones in, and just walk to what you need, and, yeah. but, like, whenever you really start to notice what's around you, and the people who are around you, you start to notice that those are all, like, children of God, and, and they're all, like, struggling in some way, and, like, you know, just a simple act of kindness or a simple, like, smile or just like a hey or something like that, it really brightens up people's day and you something that you don't really realize. And you may never see it. You may never see that person ever again. And it may affect them in a really big way. It may not affect them at all. They may just brush it over. But, you know, you can – it's such a little thing that, like, why, why not risk it? Yeah, and with 2020 and everyone being in their homes, I think that's something – that I pray we remember is to acknowledge the people around us at the grocery stores and in the malls and things. Um, So you play a huge part behind the scenes at camp. And I know the weeks that I worked behind the scenes, I would get so discouraged like when I was in the kitchen. So what keeps you going 
a year round to do the things behind the scenes and the things that people might not see for the kingdom? I mean, you just, like, for me, like, whenever I see camp, I see as, like, I'm not going to always be part of camp. Yeah. Like, there's going to be a time where I'm, like, you got to come back. But camp will still be here, and it will still be the same. It will still be the same thing. So, like, for me, like, I don't mind helping all year long. Or I don't mind, I don't mind being here for these three weeks helping camp and not, like, getting paid or anything. Yeah. Because, it, like, I'm helping camp do something way more than I can even imagine so yeah. helping organize some kind of event or something like that all throughout the year and then like coming to camp and like it's gonna happen and it's gonna affect a lot of young lives that need it so like even like like coming like let's say like I didn't come back next year and they needed my help all next year I would still help because I would want next year to be just as good as the last and maybe even better so like, I feel like it's just something that is just so worth it. And if you really think about it, it's really not that much. Like, yeah, it may be discouraging that you don't see it. And even working, like, for you, you said the kitchen. So, like, you're in the kitchen all day. Like, last year you were in the kitchen all day. And you didn't see campers. But you were helping get out food that they're going to sit at the table yeah. and compensate with. And you are, like, helping just in such a little way. But camp runs on those little ways. And if, like, let's say, like, you weren't, there was no one there in the kitchen, then we would never have food. So, like, it's just, like, little things all make one big thing. So it's super important. Yeah, and it's cool to be broken down to the realm of camp or, like, whatever your job is because you feel like you're doing this larger-than-life thing because we know it impacts thousands of campers. Um, and that's only a small piece of the kingdom. Yeah. And it's, like, God gives us this visual. And wherever your workplace or your ministry is, and it can be like in a secular workplace, but still you're doing something that's going to feed someone else's yeah. ability to encounter God. And it's super hard because like, I remember last year whenever I was not a camp counselor and I was like on activities or maintenance or something like that, I would see like, you know, the counselors are doing something so big, you know, yeah. they're like heavily impacting the, the kids and they're like right there, like connecting and stuff like that. And you know, like, you see that and then you compare it to your role and like maintenance and I'm just like shoveling mulch like mm -hmm. what does that have to do but that it all just kind of feeds into one and like yeah it may be discouraging to see that but if you really think of it as all of us helping like one thing then it, it's a pretty much a blessing like anything you do out here is a blessing yeah and it's just so easy to get discouraged when we see like the fun shiny yeah. opportunities and things and I know I'm a journalism major and I'll be writing stories all the time about people doing really cool things yeah. and sometimes I'm like I just wish that I was the person yeah. doing that, but I know that God uses words and that he's going to use my gift, um, even if I'm not the person on the front lines yeah. making the change happen. So how has camp, you said you were super shy as a camper, yeah. what change have you seen in yourself through this place um, that has extended beyond this place? So like me, I was a camper for three years and I was not, I was not the loud or like I had a few friends, but I always loved to camp and I always came back for some reason and going into I don't I could not like tell you why I applied as a counselor <laughs> I guess just because um so going into my first year as a counselor um in 2018 I was super quiet like even during that training I was not very loud I was not like I didn't I really kind of kept to myself and camp has helped me camp has basically pushed me so far in my comfort zone that I've grown so much from that and like how I am here today like I'm just such a just such a different person than what I was in 2017 2018 so okay. and so in such a good way like I'm so much more confident in who I am and I'm just, like so much willing to be always pushed out of my comfort zone because when you realize that when you stay in your comfort zone like you may feel safe but whenever you get pushed out of your comfort zone you just that's how you learn and that's how you grow yeah and then once you grow then you just feel so much you just find so much better stuff about you and that's where you're free is yeah. outside your comfort yeah. zone and just meeting you last year i would have loved to know you before yeah. because ty was like the fun one that brought people together yeah. and was just kind of the life of the party the, a silent life of the party a lot of the times and just what a gift that's been to the people around you you just gotta like honestly you just gotta find like the hardest thing is to find yourself and you just gotta find yourself in like the situation that you're at so yeah. like I don't like for me like 
Yeah, I may be activities, but I don't always have to be the loudest person in the room. Yeah. Like, I don't, that doesn't have to be my role, and that's not everyone's role. And you just, like, you just learn, and you, like, if you're constantly, if you are not the loudest person in the room, and you want to be the loudest person in the room, then you are just constantly fighting with that. Mm -hmm. And so you just need to find your, like, place. And it may be hard to find your place, but once you, like, really understand, like, what God has put you down here for, and, like, like your gifts and stuff like that, then you can really excel in your place, and then people will notice that. Yes, absolutely. And life with the Lord is supposed to be fun, but it doesn't have to be in a loud, obnoxious way, which I just see so evident in you. So going out of your comfort zone, what's your advice for that? What gave you the courage to do that over time? So my, whenever I was going to be a counselor, I had quit uh, about a month before. And I just made up this excuse because I just was so not for it like, yeah it was, just, it was just i just knew it was like i would just picture myself and i just could not picture myself there and i did not want to have to go through the whole thing of like just basically going out of my comfort zone so i made mm -hmm. excuses like i didn't have a car and stuff like that so i just made all these excuses and then like weeks before camp i just felt like there was just something in me that i needed to be there like i just yeah. needed to be there so i texted miss carrie and i was like hey like is there any way i can come back and she was like yes so like i felt like the 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 thought of going out of your comfort zone is what's gonna hold you back the most. Mm -hmm. So if you just kind of like, just kind of go with it, just kind of be like a a leaf in the air, a plastic bag in the air, <laughs> <laughs> then like it'll be a lot. Like it'll still be scary, but if you just kind of know that, like w what you're getting yourself into, and you you it's okay. To, fail like it's okay yeah. to do something and fail at it like you just learn from that and like especially here at camp like I could do something and then like I could do an activity and it could not go good and like I'm not going to get criticism from here like I'll just like I can ask people around here like how would that be better and I still do that like during staff training yeah. we did all those activities and after the activities I would ask people I said is there anything that needs to be changed because once you like once you you just really need to just push yourself out of there and then just know that like you just have to find people that will be there to support you and just yeah. and once you're around there then you can literally do anything growth is absolutely partnered with going out of your comfort zone yes. if you want to improve and get better and we have to be able to laugh at ourselves yes. because i just think god thinks it's ridiculous when we take ourselves yes. so seriously like in the grand scheme of who we are and it's so easy to get down if, like, you do something dumb or you say something and, like, no one responds, but that's literally a moment in eternity. Yeah. Like, it won't matter. Like, it doesn't really matter. Like, I feel like, I feel like people get that stuck in their head, that they're scared of mistake or they're scared of judgment or something like that. But you don't really know until you put yourself out there that some yeah. people are, like, people will not. Or, like, it's okay to make mistakes because if you don't ever make a mistake, then you never learn. Or mm -hmm. if you don't ever put yourself out there, then you just never know. Yeah. So I like my biggest thing is that the worst thing someone could say is no or yeah. something like that. And that's I feel like that's something that I always have to remind myself. Like I'm not I'm not saying that I'm just like great at it. Like I always have to remind myself and I still get to those points where like I'm scared to do that or like it like I'll get in my head and I'm saying, Oh no, that's stupid. Like yeah. But you just have to just constantly pray about it and and just know that it's okay sometimes. Yeah, I think a lot of times the thought of something happening is way yeah. worse than yeah. it actually happening. And it's cool because you inspire me in that and that you're about to move to Orlando yeah. and you haven't been there before. Yeah. Um, college is doing, or Ty is, excuse me, Ty is doing the yes. Disney College program. Well, I'll be moving to Orlando in August and I don't have any, <laughs> I don't know, people keep asking me how I feel about it and I'm like, I don't know. Like, I just, <laughs> like, I don't know what to expect and I'm like yes i'm kind of nervous but at the same time i'm super excited for this new opportunity uh, and like the worst thing i could do is move down there and then i don't like it and i'll just come home or i'll figure something out yeah and that's all i can do and i'll like i'll never know like it could be awesome or it could be not the greatest <laughs> like we'll just i'm just gonna like i said this is just a comfort zone thing and i'm just gonna jump out there and learn from it. Yeah, and it's cool because what you do at camp, you're about to do on such a larger scale. It's like God's been preparing you, but you're not going to get to go deep with these people and you're not going to get to walk alongside them for long periods of time, but you're going to see thousands and thousands and thousands of people yes, every day crazy. to love in the one moment that you get to. And like, 
I may not be out there. Like, I may not be out there spreading God's word. Like, I'm not yeah. going to be asking them, like, about their, like, past and, like, trying to help them do that or being there. But I'm still going to be, like, at Disney. I'm still going to be a light and just a lot more, like, reserved way. And that's okay because they'll still see, like, I still want them to be able to see God in me and me as a Christian. And they should be able to, and, like... It, it may impact them, like I said, a little bit. It may impact them a lot, and they may ask me, and they may not. But you know, you never know until you get there. But I just gotta try and just hope. Yeah, it's the seeds for the yeah. kingdom. Yeah, at the Magic Kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> and we keep joking. I'm from Orlando, so Ty is gonna be with my family for the holidays yeah. this year, which is so fun. <laughs> um, but last two questions is: What would you go back and tell yourself before ever coming to camp? Like looking back. I see all the campers that come through camp and they just are just so funny and, <laughs> and they're just so crazy and they just don't care and stuff like that. So like if I were to go back to me whenever I came here in 2015, then I would say just to, you know, talk to more people and, and like make the most of things because I feel like a lot of times I would just rush through stuff. Yeah. Like I would just be like, oh, I don't want to do this. So I'll just, but now looking back and being here as a camp counselor, and like experiencing those activities for real and like being behind them and like even whenever I was a counselor like I would be part of them and now like I'm helping them out like I wish that I could go back as a camper and like really take advantage of the electives and stuff like that yeah and then so it's months from now and you're off the camp high and you're like missing your people you don't feel as connected to the Lord like what do you want to tell yourself then in the spiritual place that you are right now so what's the coolest thing about, like, the coolest thing about working at camp is that although, like, I may spend, like, two months with, like, these people and, like, some people I may never see again, I just know that I can always call them. Yeah. And they are always there and they can always call me. And, like, this is, like, you make lifelong friends here because you've just, ex like, experienced so much together and you've just grown so much together. And you've just helped so many kids and, and all that stuff. So, like, I just know that. Like let's say in December I'm going through a hard spot that I can call Megan or I can call Rachel or I can call like any of these people yeah. and they'll be there and they'll be able to help me and even some of them like like some people like they'll text me like just randomly they'll be like hey how are you doing and so with that so I just know that 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 I, that you're always there and I just hope that I can realize that because sometimes I don't realize that because sometimes I go through things and I just kind of keep it to myself so I yeah. hope that I can like realize that these people are here for me and God's there for me and, and stuff like that so yes it's so easy to isolate ourselves and that's yes. when we go back to every job is a ministry like people that make cell phones there are lots of evils yeah. in cell phones but just what a gift they are to us and our camp families but I'll pray us out Jesus thank you so much for Ty and the gift that he is to camp we thank you that life with you is fun and that life with you is an adventure Lord, I pray over everyone listening to these words that they would be encouraged and inspired to get out of their comfort zone, that they would love one another as if they were loving you yourself. Um, God, we praise you. We thank you. And we just love that we get to live here and experience this piece of heaven and that we can take out the fun, we can take out the games, and we can apply those things to all of our lives in the real world. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right, where's the turtle? <laughs> <laughs>